When it comes to adopting a kid, there's a lot of debate. Many children are left without families because the standards required to qualify are extremely high and in many cases unreachable. Some individuals, on the other hand, believe that these criteria should be high because they want the child to be placed in the finest possible home. However, if these standards are set too high as they are currently, people will be unable to adopt because they don't meet the standards. Adoption should be made more accessible so that more children can be placed in loving homes. Adopting a kid is a difficult endeavor. To even be considered for employment by a corporation, you must meet a set of requirements. To be considered for adoption as a prospective parent, you must complete certain conditions, according to the humanist, which include criminal background checks, fingerprinting, and a home study. Thousands of children are abandoned in adoption homes every year because people who wish to adopt do not meet all the requirements. Children who are abandoned and placed in adoptive homes typically remain there for up to three years. Although these difficulties in the adoption process may not affect everyone, they do have an impact on the children who are in need of a home. Additionally, anyone who wants to adopt but cannot meet the requirements would be hampered. If adoption standards are not decreased, this will happen. As a result, children will not be adopted, which means they'll either remain in foster care or be placed in a permanent home. Aside from that, the adoption homes will become overcrowded, leaving children on the streets with nowhere to go. North Central University's Dean of Arts and Sciences, Desiree Leibengood, has been on the faculty for eight years, and she also has taught English at the university. Leibengood and her husband, Lance Leibengood, were in the midst of their professional lives when they felt a push telling them it was time to start a family. After several failed attempts to establish a family the traditional way, they sensed God speaking to them once more, and at the age of 29, they adopted their first daughter, who was 17 years old at the time of adoption. Desiree had always known she wanted to adopt since she was a little girl, and this was affirmation that this was the way God would begin to build their family for her and her husband David. However, this was only the beginning. After the first daughter left home, the Liven Goods found themselves in the position of being empty nesters at the age of 30. They made the decision to take the adoption route once again. After conducting extensive research and considering all factors, they settled on foster care adoption, in part because of the huge demand that exists in this particular section of the adoption industry. When you take older children into your house and establish a family through foster adoption, you are meeting a really deep need, Desiree explained. There are some families who adopt children who are 18 years old in order to provide them with a home and a place to land in life, says the author. The Liven Goods are currently caring for a family of five children, all of whom are under the age of six, who live with them. After six adoptions, they've discovered that there are many misconceptions about foster care and adoption that people have, and they believe that sharing their story will help to put the record straight when it comes to incorrect views about adoption. Lance and Desiree believe that raising their children and their family is a calling, just as any other parent believes that raising children is a calling, whether biological or not. These are just our children whom we admire and cherish in the same way that any parent would with their biological children, in the sense that we see our family as a kingdom family and that we want to be used for God's glory. Desiree describes it as a calling. So many people in our own town are in desperate need of assistance. Desiree is a supporter of a nonprofit organization called Real Hope, which provides videos of teens who are waiting for permanent placement. It's been proven challenging to get entry into churches and initiate a discussion about this issue with the congregation. One of the most essential things we can do as a church, according to Desiree, is to care for the children who live in our neighborhood but do not have a place to call home. In fact, if just one family from every church in America decided to foster or adopt, the adoption issue would be totally alleviated in the United States. Another common misunderstanding is that these are the broken children. The reality is that adoption is a traumatic experience, no matter where your children come from, Desiree explained. Being taken away from your biological parent is a traumatic experience, but a traumatic experience does not make a child broken. The children placed in foster care are resilient, and we think that with the right support, these children may thrive. Many people believe that adoption is expensive and that it takes years before parents are able to adopt. This is not necessarily true. In most cases, this is true for parents who are adopting from another country or who are waiting to adopt a newborn child. The procedure of fostering to adopt is actually free in the state of Minnesota, 
and it often progresses more quickly than adoption from other countries or adoption of newborns. A lengthy procedure of interviews and home inspections preceded the Leibn Goods' acceptance of a child into their family, which took several months in all. Despite the fact that the children were living in their home, there is a transitional phase between being foster care parents and adopting parents, which time the children remain in their care. The Leibn Good household is crowded, amusing, and prosperous. Desiree has a wealth of information regarding her family's adoption story, and she's eager to share it with you. We're going to tell you about a woman named Kate Wenz and her adoption experience in a story that's comparable to this one as well. Right after graduating from college, Kate Wenz and her family embarked on their foster to adopt adventure across Ohio. She went through the training process, and the family began fostering children in 2012. Initially, the family just took part in respite care, which was a temporary arrangement. This implies that they never had a long-term placement in the first place. They only cared for the children for a few days at a time while foster parents were out of town or needed to take a break from their responsibility. A foster parent is educated on how to advocate for the reunification of children with their biological parents when that's a viable option. And for the most part, the children in Kate and her family's care were always accompanied by family members who were able to provide for them. However, in 2017, they were enlisted to assist with the placement of three children who were unable to find a family to care for them. The children were a perfect fit for the family. The Wens family was delighted to accept the three children. Despite this, Kate and her husband were both adamant about taking their time with the fostering to adoption process because the decision would transform their lives. Regardless, the three children were a perfect fit for their family. Kate stood by and observed as the bond between the youngsters grew stronger with each passing day. By late November of this year, the family had successfully adopted the three children, thereby completing their family. Being a foster parent also provides an opportunity for foster parents to grow and learn from their experiences. Because no two situations are identical, each new placement provides the opportunity to learn from a variety of diverse perspectives on a given subject. Catherine admits to preferring more controlled surroundings, such as knowing when her placement will be scheduled. Yet Kate has stated in a previous interview that the adoptive child is experiencing some difficulties and that we should be aware of these difficulties. Despite the fact that most adopted children experience some feelings of grief and loss as a result of their adoption, this is something that parents may find difficult to comprehend. They may experience the death of their biological parents, as well as the death of siblings, grandparents, and other extended family members. It's common for older children who have been adopted later in life to be saddened by the loss of their foster families, friends, and school or neighborhood. Whenever children believe that others are unable to understand or recognize their sadness, they may experience an increase in their feelings of grief and loss. They may also experience other emotions involved with the grieving process, such as anger, denial, anxiety, and fear. It's possible that these concerns will surface at various points in the adoptee's life, such as the birth of a child or the death of a parent at some point in the future. Feelings of sadness and loss may be accompanied by concerns of abandonment and rejection. Difficulties with holding on and letting go, behavioral problems and apprehension about future losses, all of which can have an impact on the formation of relationships and friendships. When an adopted person grieves their birth family, he or she may have feelings of guilt, as if he or she is betraying their parents' trust by grieving their birth family. Everyone copes with grief and loss in their own unique way and at their own time and some children may require additional assistance as they come to terms with these terrible feelings of loss and grief. Adoption can create certain difficulties for children as they go through the process of forming their own identities, particularly as adolescents. It's especially likely that adoptees who have limited information about their birth families and the reasons their birth parents chose adoption may suffer challenges in the development of their identities. Adopted children who are struggling to find their places in their adoptive family may experience difficulties with identity development. Some adopted persons may perceive themselves as strange, undesirable, or rejected, and they may find it difficult to integrate into their families or into the communities of their non-adopted counterparts who are more knowledgeable about their past and more confident in their identities. If the child's color or heritage is different from that of the adoptive family, Identity issues may be made even more difficult to resolve. The poor self-esteem experienced by children who encounter rejection and struggle to find their place 
among their peers or family members may necessitate the use of counseling or therapy services to assist them overcoming these challenges. Childhood trauma, such as neglect, abuse, multiple foster care placements, or institutional care may result in significant developmental, social, and emotional changes in children who are adopted at a later age and who have also experienced trauma earlier in life. According to some study, these youngsters may be at more risk for concerns such as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder (ADHD), substance misuse, learning disabilities, depression, anxiety disorders, and attachment disorder than the general population. Many children who have previously experienced abuse, neglect, or institutionalization will find it difficult to build trustworthy relationships with their adoptive parents. Counseling and support services for children who have experienced trauma or who are struggling with developmental or mental health concerns may be beneficial to their well-being. Families may require more information and help in order to effectively handle these issues with their kids. Kate learned a valuable lesson during the process, which was that every child has the ability to be extraordinary. More people should consider becoming foster parents so that more children in the system can be provided with the resources and care they need to grow up and make a difference. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.